Hi, I'm Dr. Romano, Professor of Organic Chemistry, and we're here doing some general biology today. This group, we're going to start off today with the human digestive system. We're going to continue on, but I wanted to just go over a few things with you on the pancreas. In my bio notes, you're going to see some really good graphics. So try to go to those bio notes, and you'll be able to follow along. If we retracted the stomach, Behind the stomach, we would see this elongated gland, and we call this a mixed gland, if you remember, meaning it has a dual nature. It's got an endocrine function, think hormones when you hear endocrine, and it has an exocrine function, if you remember, we're going to think enzymes. Now, let's go over a few things. As far as the endocrine portion goes, there's no ducts. Hormones are secreted directly into the bloodstream to a target organ. Now, if you look under the microscope, um, when you go to histology class, you'll see that only 2% of the pancreatic mass is made up of the endocrine section. And these group of cells, if you remember, is called the what? The islet of Langerhans. Now, if you recall from the last lecture, each one of these islet cells makes a different endocrine product. For example, we have alpha cells make glucagon, which increase blood sugar. And the beta cells make insulin, which decreases blood sugar. Two guaranteed type of questions you're going to see on the exams, whether it's an MCAT or a DAT. Now, as far as proportion goes, about 70% of those islet cells are beta cells. So the alpha and the beta is the bulk. Then we have some minor ones, about 9% somatostatin. And somatostatin would be inhibitor of insulin and glucagon and inhibits the hormones, gastrin, and secretin. Then we have the lesser known cells, which is in my study notes, the epsilon cells, which makes ghrelin, which induces hunger. I don't know about you guys, I'm getting hungry just thinking about food right now. But at any rate, you gotta be very careful of these gastrointestinal hormones, because for instance, ghrelin is not only made by the epsilon cells of the pancreas, but also made in the stomach. If you remember when we went to the stomach, I didn't mention that in the last class, but that also makes ghrelin. So you got to be a little careful because a lot of these GI hormones are made in other spots. And then we have the pancreatic peptide or PP cell. These cells make pancreatic peptides in a very small percentage. So you have these five types of cells that comprise the islet of Langerhans. I think for the DAT exam and the oath, the first three are the most important. As far as exocrine goes, the bulk of the organ is exocrine, and that makes the enzymes. And if you remember, if you look at the study notes, you'll see the long pancreatic duct that drains into the duodenum. If you remember, there was also the common bile duct that we spoke about last time that drains into the duodenum, and they both join. Who remembers where? Very good. Goldstein always has the answer. The ampulla, ampulla ravata is where they join. You can take a look at that um, in a book. The exocrine function will produce amylases, lipases, and proteases, which break down the carbohydrates, lipids, and proteins, respectively. You don't need to know specifics about the proteases, but at least know Trypsin, chymotrypsin, and carboxypeptidase are proteases. When you get to biochemistry, you'll learn that the binding pockets are different. If you look at the binding pocket of, say, trypsin, it's different than the gigantic binding pocket of chymotrypsin, which will fit uh, aromatic residues. So because the binding pocket is different, they'll be able to break different sections of the proteins. Then you have the ribonucleases which we didn't mention last time, but these are some other enzymes. Deoxyribonucleases, which breaks down the nucleic acids, elastase, gelatinase, which breaks down collagen. I also mentioned that bicarbonate in water is also secreted by the um, exocrine cells, and they decrease the acidity coming into the small intestine from the stomach. Finally, you should remember, if you go back to my notes, that secretin and CCK um, these are made by the enteroendocrine cells of the duodenum and the jejunum, and they control pancreatic secretions. I think if you know what's here, I think you're in good shape for the data and the oath, and you know my bio notes. Be very careful as far as the bio goes. As I told you guys, there's a whole group of student, dental students at Columbia 
who think they're authors. They actually plagiarized the Campbell book. They reworded clips. They reworded Kaplan material. And when you reword something, you lose context. And when you lose context in something, um, often there's errors. So I wouldn't really do anything with the bio. If you need to look something up, I recommend Leland Johnson, who is a PhD author, and Neil Campbell. He's a PhD. These are dental students trying to rip you guys off for time tests or something like that. So don't go near any notes like that. If you want to see any notes, um, like I said, go to a PhD written textbook. And I also think Barron's and Cliffs, they did a pretty good job. Um, as well as my bio notes. All right, we're going to be moving on today, um, moving away from the GI system and going into the type of cell lines. All right, that's it. Bye-bye.